where would you find the maximum nose weight for your vehicle's tow hitch? There are so many words in that sentence that I literally don't know the meaning of. I cannot drive. I just turned 24 and I can't drive. And it's come to my attention that that is something that adult people need to do. You have to do a practical test and you have to do a theory test. But what I don't know is what a theory test actually entails. And the other day I googled it and I saw there was a practice test. And I nearly sat it then and there just to see, just to see what would happen. And then I realised, no, I can film it. And I can film it and I can make it into content. I've got my laptop here um, and I'm going to literally just sit a theory test with absolutely no prior knowledge or revision knowledge being quite key no prior knowledge i know that the speed limit on a motorway is 70 and that is like when i say that's it that is quite literally it i'm literally going to learn to drive in an automatic because why would i all of this nah it's not for me practice theory test one for car drivers the test has 50 questions. You need to get 43 right to pass and you have 57 minutes to do it. Oh, I don't have 57 minutes. That's so long, right? Oh my God. Why is it dangerous to travel too close to the vehicle ahead? Your engine will overheat. Your mirrors will need adjusting. Your view of the road will be restricted. Oh, your view of the road will be restricted. Yeah, obviously. What signs, sign means no stopping? That? The, the big... Yeah? Okay. Ow! Oh, I, I don't like there's a timer and I don't like it. You wish to tow a trailer. Where would you find the maximum nose weight for your vehicle's tow hitch? There are so many words in that sentence that I literally don't know the meaning of. In the vehicle handbook, obviously. I mean, that seems too obvious. Right. What should you do if your anti-lock brakes Wait, wait, what should you do if your anti-lock brakes warning light stays on? Check the brake fluid level. Check the foot brake fi So many of these words, I don't know. Check the foot brake free pay play. Anti-lock brake. What the fuck's an anti-lock brake? Check the brake fluid level, check the foot brake. I'm, I'm just gonna say check the brake fluid level. I don't know what that means. You're looking for somewhere to park your vehicle. What should you do if the only free spaces are marked for disabled drivers? Use a different, use a different play. Wait for a regular parking space. Obviously. Who's clicking park in the disabled bay? Nobody is. <sighs> right. You're driving in an open road in dry weather. What distance should you keep from the vehicle in front? It's two chevrons, but that answer isn't on here. I remember this, because I had a conversation with my dad about it once. My dad was a driving instructor, by the way, before. I'm 24, I don't know how to drive, my dad was a driving instructor. Two second time gap, one car length, two meters or two car lengths? Mm, one, two, that seems too, something tells me it's a two second time gap, but also I know it is like two chevrons apart and the chevrons are quite wide, one, two. Two meters social distancing. One car length. I'm just gonna say one car. I think that's wrong, but I don't know. You're driving towards this left hand bend. What danger should you be anticipating? A vehicle overtaking you, mud on the road, the road getting area, pedestrians walking towards you, obviously. Yeah? I'm gonna say pedestrian because I think a vehicle shouldn't be overtaking you on the corner anyway. What does this sign mean? Hump bridge, hump in the road, entrance to a tower, hump in the road. It means humping the road. If that's wrong, that's so embarrassing. What should you do as you approach this lorry? Slow down and be prepared to wait. Make the lorry wait for you. Flash your lights at the lorry. Move to the right hand side of the road. Slow down and, and be prepared to wait. We drive on the left in this country, do we? Do we? Yeah, nah. Slow down and be prepared to wait. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Imagine, imagine I get so many wrong. I'm not planning on passing this, but I just want to say, you're in a built up area at night and the road is well lit. When should you use dipped headlights? What the fuck's a dipped headlight? 
so you can see further along the road. What the fuck is a dim headlight? It's either so that you can see further along the road or you can be seen by others. Headlights, dipped headlight maybe means like, so you can see further along the road, I'm just going with that, I'm bored. What colour are the reflective studs between a motorway and a slip road? White? You're following two cyclists as they approach a roundabout in the left-hand lane. Where would you expect the cyclist to go? Any direction? You're coming up to a roundabout, but you could be going round the roundabout. <laughs> Any direction? But I mean, maybe they're in the left-hand lane because they don't know what lane they need to be in and they're gonna switch later on. I'm gonna say left. You're approaching a roundabout. What should you do if the cyclist ahead is signaling to turn right? Overtake on the right, give a warning with your horn, signal to the cyclist to move across, give the cyclist plenty of room. Well, you're gonna give the cyclist plenty of room, aren't you? Some of these are so stupid, like give a warning with your horn. If you're clicking that, what is wrong with you? She said she's definitely gonna fail this, right? Okay. You take some cough medicine given to you by a friend. What should you do before driving your car? I haven't even looked. It's obviously gonna say, check that it's non-drowsy, right? It's like something like that. Ask your friend if taking the medicine affected their driving. Drink some strong coffee one hour before driving. Check the label to see if the medicine will affect your driving. Drive a short distance to see if the medicine is affecting your driving. Sorry, we're not with Dominic Cummins. We don't need to have a drive to test our driving. It's check the label. Wow, I knew that one before I even looked at the answers. Driving. Okay. What should you do when you park at night on a road that has a 40 mile per hour speed limit? Park facing the traffic, leave the lights, parking lights switched on, no. Leave the dip, dipped headlights switched on, no. Park near a street light? It depends where you can get parked though. What if there's not a space? <laughs> Park facing the traffic. I mean, it makes no difference if your car's facing the traffic because They'll, they'd see the back like they'd see the front. So it's park near a street, right? Maybe. What should you do when you move off from behind a parked car? Look around. We're going to look around. We're not just going to use the external mirrors. We're going to use everything. And we're going to look around. Imagine that's wrong. Wow. You've been involved in an argument that's made you feel angry. What should you do before starting your journey? One of the options is have an alcoholic drink. You should calm the fuck down. That's so funny. Why is it important to make full use of the slip road as you join a motorway? Because there is space available to turn round if you need to, well it's not that. To allow you direct access to the overtaking lanes. To allow you to fit safely into the traffic flow in the left hand lane. Because you can, okay, so it's not number one. It's not number four. It's either to allow you direct access to the overtaking lanes or to allow you to fit safely into the traffic flow in the left-hand lane. I believe it's that one. What should you do if you think the driver of the vehicle in front has forgotten to cancel their right indicator? Flash your lights to alert the driver, sound your horn before overtaking, overtake on the left if there's room, stay behind and don't overtake. Well, I know when that happens, my parents flash their lights at the person in front, like, hello, you've left your indicator on. I'm gonna say flash your lights. I don't actually know if that's right. It might just be stay behind and don't overtake, but you probably wanna tell them like, hello. And like, what are the lights for? That's probably wrong. Oh, what's this? Oh, not, not signals. Which instrument panel warning light would you show that the headlights are on main, are on main beam? Oh, it's gotta be that, right? Gotta be that. That looks like a light, I don't know. Oh, I see. You're not in that car. The car in the picture here. So you're driving and this dri this car is going beep, 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 beep. So what you should do is just um, sound your horn and be prepared to, st to stop. Because you're not going to move to the opposite side of the road because you're the car could still hit you. You're not going to drive through because the car could still hit you. You're not going to speed up and drive through quickly because the dark car could still hit you. So we're going to go sound your horn, even though I know they don't really like you can being all beep, 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 but still. Uh, what should you do if you're passing loose sheep on the road? I live in London. <laughs> what should you do if you're passing loose sheep on the road? Uh, loose sheep. 
Um, briefly sound your ho horn, go very slowly, pass quick quickly but quietly, herd them to the side of the road. I'm gonna say go very slowly. I'm not about to get out and start herding sheep. When would you use the right hand lane on a three way motorway? When you're turning right, when you're overtaking, when you're traveling above the speed limit, it's not that, when you're trying, okay. It's not when you're trying to save fuel. It's not when you're traveling above the speed limit. You can't turn right off a motorway. Oh, maybe you can sometimes if you're doing one of them weird ones. It's when you're overtaking, right? You're carrying an 11 year old child on the front seat of your car. They are under 1.35 meters, four foot five. Which seatbelt security must be in place? They must use an adult seatbelt. They must be able to fasten their own seatbelt. They must use a suitable child restraint. They must be able to see clearly out of the front window. It's not adult seatbelt because there's a height thing, right? It could be, I don't know. They must be able to fasten their own seatbelt. Well, what difference would that make to their height? Like little kids can fasten their own seatbelts of like eight or nine. I'm gonna say they must use a suitable child restraint. Even though I don't know what a suitable child restraint is. <laughs> Strap them in. What is the main benefit of driving a four wheel drive vehicle to tell everybody how rich you are? Shorter shopping distances. <laughs> Improved grip on the road, yeah. Okay, you're driving towards a zebra crossing. What should you do if a person in a wheelchair is waiting to cross? You stop because you can't, you're stopping because the person in the wheelchair is here and they're waiting to cross. So you would do both, right? In real life, not in test land, you would go, go on, yeah, go on. And you would come to a stop and they would know that you're not gonna run them over. But I would just say, be prepared to stop because they like to make you jump through hoops, don't they? Stupid question. What does this curved arrow, I think I know this. What does this curved arrow road marking mean? Heavy vehicles should take the next road on the left to avoid a weight limit. Oh God. The road ahead bends to the left. Overtaking traffic should move back to the left. Yes, that's what it is. Yes, 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 yes. I think that's what it is, right? Because there is a dotted line on one side and a solid line on the other. And the dotted line means you can overtake, but the solid line means you can't. So I think it's basically saying like, the solid line is gonna become solid the whole way. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. What should you do when you leave your car unattended for a few minutes? Leave the engine run. Some of these questions. Switch the engine off, but leave the key in. Lock it and remove the key. Park near a traffic warden. Lock it and remove the key. <laughs> you wish to turn right ahead. Why should you take up the correct position in good time? To allow the other drivers to pull out in front of you. Turning right. To give a better view into the road that you're joining. To help other road no users know what you intend to do. To allow other drivers to pass you on the right. No. So you're going to turn right. Why should you take up the correct positioning in good time? Because you've got to put your indicator on. Beep, beep, beep. Everybody knows what I'm doing to keep everybody safe. How nice. 30 out of 50. Come on, let's do this in record time. You're driving on a motorway in windy conditions. What should you do as you overtake a high-sided vehicle? It's like a lorry. I would say be wary of a sudden gust. But also, like, you probably just, like, wouldn't. You wouldn't. You'd probably be like, I'm just not going to overtake. What should you do when you're approaching traffic lights that have a red and amber showing together? Together? Do they do that? Well, it's either stop because the lights are changing to red or take care because there's a fault with the lights. Do lights? I don't think that's right. I think there's a fault with the lights if that happens. What does this sign mean? Mini roundabout. Mini roundabout. Or roundabout. Mini roundabout? Mini roundabout. You're following a long vehicle approaching a crossroads. What should you do if the driver signals right but moves close to the left hand curb? So they're like indicating they're going this way but they've actually gone that way. Either warn the driver about the wrong signal, wait behind the long vehicle, report the driver to the police, overtake on the right hand side. You're gonna just wait behind. You're gonna wait behind and you're just gonna see what they're gonna do. You're gonna be like, you can carry on with that. I'm gonna stay where I am. If you're approaching a red light at a puffin crossing. What the fuck is a puffin crossing? Oh, it's a puffin crossing. <laughs> Pedestrians are on the crossing. When will the red light change? 
when you start to edge forward onto the crossing, well, it's not that, when the pedestrians have cleared the crossing, when the pedestrians push the button on the far right side of the crossing, when a driver from the opposite direction reaches the crossing. I don't know what a puffing crossing is. Um, you learn something new every day. So I think it's when they've... So I don't know what one is, but the fact that they say when the pedestrians push the button on the far right side of the crossing tells me, is there a button on these crossings that I don't know about that you can push? I think I'm going to say when the pedestrians have cleared their crossing, I think. Why should you allow extra room whilst overtaking a motorcyclist on a windy day? First of all, who in a car is overtaking a motorcyclist? The rider may be blown in front of you, the rider may stop suddenly, the rider may be travelling faster than normal. The rider may travel it be fast as usual. The rider might be blown in front of you. Mm. Oh, this one has me confused, you know. I think it's going to be the rider may be blown out in front of you, ball, so that could really be wrong. You've just passed your first practical driving test. What will you have to do if you get six penalty points on your licence in the next two years? Retake only your theory tests, it's not that. Retake your theory and practical test. Retake only your practical test or reapply for your full licence. Is six points a lot? I think it is, isn't it? Like six points on the licence. Maybe you have to reapply. Maybe you do have to reapply. Maybe you have to reapply. Okay, I'm gonna go with both, but I don't think it's both. I think it's both. I don't think it's both, but it might be both. How can you use your vehicle's engine to control your speed? I'm learning in an automatic. I mean, I haven't started yet, but I will be. How can you use your vehicle's engine to control your speed? By changing to a lower gear, reverse gear, higher gear. I'm gonna click lower gear because I don't know anything about that because I'm learning in an automatic. You're on a smart motorway. Ooh, not a stupid motorway, a smart motorway. What does it mean if a red cross is showing above the hard shoulder and mandatory speed limits above all the other lanes. It means that you, it's for the emergency and breakdown use only, surely. What could you do to help injured people at an incident? Keep them warm and comfortable, give them something to eat, keep them on the move by walking them around. Give them a warm drink. Keep them warm and comfortable. Um, at an incident, someone is suffering from severe burns. How could you help them? Apply lotions. Just hold on, babes. I've got some Body Shop coconut body part in my bag. Let me just quick hop in. I'll bring it. Will be amazing. Burst the blisters. Yeah, hold on, babes. Once I get my coconut body water out of the bag, I'll just squeeze all your blisters open. We're going to douse the burns with clean, cool water is what we're going to do. How would you use... Oh, not the anti-lock brakes again when you need to stop in an emergency. Keep pumping the foot brake to prevent skidding. Brake normally, but grip the steering wheel tightly. Brake promptly and firmly until you've stopped. Apply the parking brake to reduce stopping distance. I'm just going to say brake promptly and firmly until you've stopped. Surely. You're approaching traffic lights and the red light is showing. What signal will show next? Oh my god. I actually don't know that. You're stopped at the lights. It's red and then it goes green for go. But then when it's green and cars are driving through, it goes amber to be like, mm, it's going to stop in a minute. There's no amber to tell you to go. So it goes green. But it'd be green and amber, but I think it's green. Oh, I hate the sign ones. What shape are traffic signs giving orders? They're all giving orders. Stop giving me orders. That is a directiony one. That one there. Um, it's either the square, the triangle, or the circle. No, the circle is speed limit i'm gonna say it's a circle because technically a speed limit is an order and the speed limit is on a circle what part of the car does the law require you to keep in good condition the gearbox the door locks the seat belts i don't know what a transmission is but don't think it's the door locks because they don't care if your car gets broken into you that's your own fault it might be the seat belt you know because if your seat belt like say someone comes along and they snip it with the scissors and then you can't use it like, that's against the law because you should be using your seatbelt. But the gearbox, like, if it's not in good condition, but, like, if the whole car is not in good condition, it would fail an MOT and that's illegal. So that's a bit of a misleading question. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. <laughs> I'm going to go the seatbelts, number four, because eeny, meeny, miny, told me. 
How should you dispose of a used vehicle battery? Bury it in your garden? No. Put it in the dustbin? No. Take it to a local authority disposal site? Leave it on waste sand. It's take it to a local authority disposal site. Following a collision, a person has been injured. <gasps> what should be a warning sign of sock? <laughs> Shock. Flushed complexion, warm dry skin, slow pulse, rapid shallow breathing. Shock though. Shock can manifest differently in different people. Like, who am I to tell you what your experience of shock should be? Okay, let's not be normative. I mean, rapid shallow breathing I would probably go with. Warm dry skin. Hold on, you might be in shock. Let me just stroke your skin and see how moist it is. I think it's rapid shallow breathing. You're going to turn left from a main road into a minor road. What should you do as you approach the junction? Just keep in the left of the middle of the road. No. Keep in the middle of the road. No. Swing out to the right just before turning. Why would you do that if you're turning left? Keep well to the left of the road. Thank you. Oh my god, only two questions left and we've literally got 25 minutes left of this test. Wow, maybe we failed. We probably have failed to be honest, you can only get seven wrong. Where is there a warning, reduce speed now? Oh my god, video! <gasps> Not a video! You can press play when you're ready, you can watch the clip multiple times. We've got plenty of time, so let's watch this video and see what they're doing. Okay, car, well that was reduce speed now. Wait, what? Oh, this video is so long. Are we turning? We're not. Okay, I want to watch that again. Traffic is merging from the left. There was actually traffic coming from the left. There's a crossroads and a double bend. I think it's that, actually, because there's two signs. So there's like, see here, that's a crossroad, and I think that's a double bend. So I think this is crossroad and this double bend. But, yeah. But there is also traffic merging from the left, isn't there? Yeah, crossroads double bed, we're just gonna sort of call it that. Has the line in the center of the road changed? It's currently dashed, so that means you can overtake, right? Has it changed? <laughs> ah, can I go back? Oh, I can. It literally hasn't, it's still dashed. I'm gonna say to warn you not to change lanes, but the, the, the line hasn't changed. But I'm just gonna click that because I wanna finish it. The driver towing the caravan wants to turn right onto the dual carriageway. What should they do? Move partly into central reservation and wait until it's safe to turn. No, I mean, don't do that because it's too long. So you'd be, the caravan's too long, so you'd be in the lane. Move out when an approaching driver flashes their headlights. Turn left and find a suitable place to turn around. Wait until the road is clear in both directions. Okay. I'm about to click end test with 21 minutes and 16 seconds to spare. Obviously that is going down as I speak. Let's see what I got. Are you sure? Ending the test will show your results. Okay, okay. Oh, why am I fucking nervous? Oh my God, what? <laughs> to be fair, I answered 39 questions correctly. I don't think that's too bad, you know. Let's quickly look at what I did wrong. Okay, so I have obviously failed. As we can see, it says it in red. Four out of five correct. Safety in your vehicle. I got the one about anti-lock brakes wrong. See, I don't know what an anti-lock brake is incorrect so i should have said had the brakes checked immediately i was gonna put that oh my god so that was one that i nearly put that and i would have gotten that right so i'm not calling it a point but i'm calling it like i did kind of know and now i would know for again that's quite good oh my god look where we're revising um you're driving in an open road oh the distance one the distance one a two second time gap oh my god that's another one where i literally said it could be that um four out of five correct hazard awareness i got the one wrong what should you do if you think the vehicle the driver of the vehicle has forgotten to put their indicator on i said flash your lights again this is one where i was like i don't know i think you should stay behind and overtake but my parents flash their lights so i kind of knew that was wrong vulnerable road users incorrect you're following, oh, the cyclist one. Any direction. Oh my God, I literally said they could be going in any direction because they might change lanes later on. What did I get wrong? What color are the reflective studs between the motorway? I just, I was like, why? I don't know. It was green. Fine. So we know that the reflective studs are green now. I didn't know that one. So I'm not counting that as my, in my potential correct answers. Rules of the road. I only got two out of four correct. You remember <laughs> built up area at night and the road as well. Look, the dipped headlights. 
so the answer was so that you can be easily seen by others that was another one where i was like i don't know what dipped headlights are but it is are you you either see further down the road or be easily seen by others so that is now five that i kind of nearly got right what should you do when you park at night on the road that has a 40 you <laughs> leave the parking light switched on what I definitely would have gotten that. I would not have gotten that. Road and traffic signs, we did badly on that one. I got only got three out of six correct. What should you do when you're approaching traffic lights that had red and amber um, showing together? Wait for the green light. Oh, so they're not broken. Be aware that other traffic might still be clearing the junction as you approach. A green traffic light means you go, but only if the way is clear. Okay, yeah, I wouldn't have gotten that. Um, what does this sign mean? Oh. It means, oh, it just means roundabout. Oh, okay, I was pretty sure that that was all right. Okay, well, all right, fine. You're approaching traffic light and the red light is showing. Which signal will show next? If you know which light is going to show next, you can plan your approach accordingly. This can help prevent excessive braking and hesitation at the junction. You're approaching a traffic light and a red light is showing. What signal will show next? Red and amber. Oh, I don't get that. Oh, I don't get that at all. The video clip. Why is the centre line changed? But the line didn't change. Oh, it, ch it didn't mean it changed from one clip to the other. It meant the break in the road. I did notice that, but I didn't think it meant that. I thought it meant a change in the video. Okay. This mock test is only a, so a small sample of questions available. Jesus. Well, I quite enjoyed that. I think I did all right for no revision, don't you? We'll keep you updated. I think I might vlog learning to drive. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.